What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2022. Now as the name suggests, this of course is the successor of the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2021 that came out last year. So in this video, we're going to be going over some of the features and specs of this phone to see what all changed and to really help you decide whether or not this phone is going to be the right one for you. Now before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. But with that being said, let's get started. So this phone has a 6.8 inch 90 hertz IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 396, an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by nine, and a screen to body ratio of about 84.6%. So the bezels are pretty thin. The phone overall has a pretty nice modern look to it. And I'm definitely happy with that. Usually on mid-range and lower end phones, the bottom bezel tends to be a little bit thicker, but with this phone, it's really not too bad. It doesn't take away from the look or anything like that. And as far as the actual quality of the display itself goes, as you can see, the image is really crisp and sharp. Definitely what you would expect from a 1080p display. In general, the colors do look really bold and bright. And combined with the large size of the display, this phone is going to be great for content consumption. So if you're streaming videos, playing games, viewing photos, even reading, everything is going to look really nice on this phone. And in addition to just having a large display, there's also the matter of the form factor. It's a little bit taller and more narrow than a lot of other phones out there. So you're going to be able to fit more on the screen without scrolling when you're reading something. And it's also going to give you a nicer, more cinematic look when you're watching videos and landscape mode. In addition to all this, this phone does of course have a 90 hertz display, which lots of phones have been getting these days, and that's going to make the movement on the screen a little bit smoother and more fluid. You can probably tell just a little bit through this video, but in person I will say, it really does make a difference, especially if you're doing something like watching a video or playing a game, stuff where there's lots of animation and movement on the screen. So if you're going to be doing a lot of that, then this phone is going to be a great option. Now for the front facing camera up here, we also have the nice looking hole punch design. And this camera is 16 megapixels. Now for storage, this phone is getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So this is definitely a good amount of storage, especially these days. With things like apps and even the system itself getting larger and larger as time goes on, it's always a good idea to have more storage than you think you need. So with this phone, for most people, this is going to be plenty. Even if you're a power user, I mean, I have a bunch of apps on this phone myself and it's really not taking up hardly any space on this phone, at least relative to the total storage. So if we actually go into the settings and look at the phone's storage, as you can see, I'm using 32.71 gigabytes and it's only taking up 26%. So that really goes to show there's a lot of space on here. So if you're more of a power user, if you like to play lots of games on your phone, or maybe you have lots of photos and videos and stuff like that, then this phone is going to be a great option with all that storage because even if you start to fill it up, you can always use a micro SD card to expand the storage even more. Now for security features, this phone has both a fingerprint scanner and face unlock. The fingerprint scanner is located right here on the power key. Real nice convenient spot for it. So let's go ahead and give it a try and see how it works. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, this fingerprint scanner is real fast and responsive. No issues here. And of course, don't forget there is face unlock too. So if you want to use that instead of the fingerprint scanner, or if you want to use both, it's always a nice option to have. Now taking a look at the rear camera setup here, we got a triple camera with a 50 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera that also doubles as a macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode. Now I can't say I've ever seen an ultra wide camera that's also macro camera at the same time. I mean it makes sense, but at the same time it's interesting because I don't think I've ever seen that setup before. But regardless, I am really happy with this camera setup because unlike so many mid-range phones, this phone does have every feature, a really nice main camera, a depth sensing camera for good portrait photos, an ultra wide camera, and a macro camera. So you don't need to choose between one or the other when it comes to the ultra wide and macro. You get both, which I don't want to say that's rare because it's really not, but I've seen so many phones that have only either an ultra wide camera or a macro camera, not both, when in my opinion, they're high end enough to the point where they should really have both of them. So with this phone, it is nice to see that we're getting a really feature packed camera. Now to give you an idea of of what this camera can do, here are some photos taken with the main camera. There are definitely some real nice photos here, 
The details look really good. The quality in general is nice. The pictures are decently bright. So if you're gonna be taking photos you wanna keep for something like social media or something else, maybe you're sending photos to family and friends, whatever the case may be, this phone will definitely get the job done. Now here are a couple photos taken with the ultra wide camera. Again, really nice quality, actually surprisingly good for that matter because there's really no distortion around the edges. And usually with mid range phones like this that aren't quite at that high end level, you're gonna get a little bit of distortion with the ultra wide camera, but with this phone, we're really not seeing that. It just looks like a really nice photo. So that's always a good thing. So if you're after an ultra wide camera that works really well and doesn't have that kind of distortion you typically get with mid range phones, then the Moto G Stylus 2022 will definitely definitely get the job done. Now here's a photo taken with portrait mode. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. Definitely a good quality photo. So again, back to taking photos for social media. I know portrait mode is a really popular feature with stuff like Instagram. So again, the Moto G stylus is going to be a great option for something like that. Now here's a photo taken with the macro camera. Definitely looks pretty good for what it is. And again, considering that lots of phones that have ultra wide cameras don't have macro cameras, I'm glad that we're getting a macro camera and an ultra wide camera at the same time with this phone. Now for video, the Moto G Stylus 2022 can shoot in up to 1080p in both the rear and front cameras, so nothing really special there, but the video quality is still definitely decent. Now internally, the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2022 is getting 6 gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Helio G88 processor. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on the phone, and it came back with a single core score of 368 and a multi-core score of 1304. Now what I recommend doing is running a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on your current phone and comparing the scores to these to see if this phone would actually be an upgrade for you. Because by itself, this score doesn't really mean a whole lot. I could tell you from experience, just because I know the scores of so many other phones that I've run this test on, that this is a pretty average number. But again, it really doesn't mean a whole lot unless you have your current phone to really compare to this one to see where it stands. But I will say, I've been using this phone for a little bit since I got it, and I haven't had any performance issues. It's been running pretty smoothly. Now, would I use it for high-end games? Probably not. I mean, I guess I kind of have. Some of these games are a little bit more graphics heavy than your average game, not Candy Crush, but like this game, this game, they're a little bit more graphics heavy, they have some stuff going on, and this phone has run them pretty decently. So I guess it will be okay for mobile gaming, but if you're expecting to play something like Fortnite that has insanely high graphics and takes up a lot of processing power, or maybe you're doing video editing with large files, something like that, or if you're just on your phone constantly, you're probably gonna notice this phone definitely doesn't have the power of something like, say, a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra or an iPhone 13 or something like that because of course after all this is a mid-range phone so you can definitely expect some mid-range performance but again for what it is this processor is decently powerful and it's been doing regular activities like browsing the web going on social media sending text messages that sort of thing really well and it even does run mobile games pretty decently now for the battery this phone has a 5000 milliamp hour battery that supports 10 watt fast charging so we're definitely getting a really large battery and also fast charging never hurts either. With this phone, you can definitely expect to get a lot of battery life, probably multiple days worth. And then down the road as the battery is degrading, you're not going to notice it really affect you nearly as quickly as you would with a phone that has a smaller battery, just since you're starting out with so much more battery life than you actually need. So if you like to get one phone and keep it for a long period of time, this phone's going to be a great option for that. Now the Moto G Stylus 2022 unfortunately doesn't have NFC, so you're not going to be able to use contactless mobile payment services like Google Pay. Now I'm not 100% sure if other variants of the phone also don't have NFC, so there might be an international model or something like that that does, but this specific phone in my hand that I did get factory unlocked at Best Buy does not have NFC. So now that we've gone over some of the specs, let's take a closer look at the phone itself. So on the left side here, we got the slot for the SIM card and the micro SD card. On the bottom, we got a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, a USB-C port, the microphone, the speaker, and of course the stylus. Now you've probably noticed I haven't really mentioned the stylus at all in this video, but of course, as the name suggests, this phone does have a stylus. It works, I guess, decently well. I've never been a fan of mid-range phone styluses. You can't really do much with it. I mean, you can technically draw a little, but as you can see, this is not a very responsive stylus. So if you wanna do actual art that you're taking seriously, like you might be able to with a higher end device, you're probably gonna be disappointed here. So honestly, I don't really see much of a point of the stylus, but I guess a lot of people do like it. So it's not a bad feature to have. But anyway, on the right side of the phone, we got our power key that's also our fingerprint scanner, volume down, volume up, 
On the top of the phone, we got our noise canceling microphone. On the back, we got the camera setup, the flash, a Motorola logo right here. Now the back has this metallic matte finish that I really like. You can see the fingerprints in certain lighting, but it really doesn't show up too badly. Definitely not nearly as bad as a glossy finish. In fact, for comparison purposes, I got my Moto G Stylus 5G right here. And as you can see, it's much worse with this phone. You can see the fingerprints so much more with this glossy finish. Whereas with the Moto G Stylus 2022, this finish, while still having some visible fingerprints, isn't nearly as bad. So in general, this phone does have a pretty nice design and it has a decent amount of weight to it. Now the materials themselves don't really feel very premium. They don't feel cheap by any means, but at the same time, they don't feel super high end either. So in general, for what it is, I do think this phone is a pretty nice looking device. Now in conclusion, my general thoughts about the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2022. I do think for what it is, this is actually a pretty good phone. Now, is it a significant upgrade from the Moto G Stylus 2021? I don't really think so. There's some improvements like the display, for example. We got a 90 hertz display, whereas the Moto G Stylus 2021, if I can remember right, is a 60 hertz display. So I guess that's a nice thing. But other than that, I don't really think there's a whole lot that's different. I don't have a Moto G Stylus 2021 on hand right now. So I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure this phone doesn't have as much processing power. So that's a downgrade in that department. The battery is pretty much the same. So in general, comparing this phone to the Moto G Stylus 2021, which by the way, I will be making a video on later, but essentially this phone isn't really much of an upgrade. If anything, it's more of a downgrade in most regards, but by itself, I still do think the Moto G Stylus 2022 is a really good phone. If you're looking for something in the mid range that takes really nice photos, has enough processing power for daily tasks and then stuff like social media and light gaming and has a really good display for content consumption. So if you're looking for all that, then the Moto G Stylus 2022 is going to be a good option. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.